blog, Out of the Past, and I'm here with a book review video. And the book I'm going to be talking about today is this one right here, Fay Ray and Robert Riskin, A Hollywood Memoir by Victoria Riskin. This was published by Pantheon Books earlier this year in February. This is an advanced reader's copy, so this isn't the finished book. Um, the finished book is a hardcover, and it has the same cover, which is this gorgeous teal and black and white cover. You have a little portrait of Faye Ray at the top and Robert Riskin at the bottom. And for those of you who don't know who Faye Ray or Robert Riskin were, Faye Ray was an actress. She's best known um, for playing Anne Darrow in King Kong, but she also made lots of other films. She started in the silent film era and she made films like The Wedding March, and then she worked um, through the transition and into the pre-code era. There was a pre-code film I watched of hers the other day, which was amazing, called The Most Dangerous Game. And then she worked up until um, World War II, where she took a break um, to, to basically focus on the war effort and focus on her family. And then she came back in the 50s and she made films like Hell on Frisco Bay and Tammy and the Bachelor. And then she retired in the 60s. Uh, but she was always known for that one big role in King Kong and it, that legacy followed her throughout her life and beyond. Um, Robert Riskin was a Hollywood screenwriter and he worked on a lot of amazing films. Um, it Happened One Night, um, Mr. Deed Goes to Town, um, You Can't Take It With You, Meet John Doe, which has my girl Susan Peters in it. Um, yeah, he, he, made a, he wrote a lot of amazing films. Um, he collaborated quite a long time with Frank Capra and he worked for various studios and um, he basically worked up until he had a massive stroke in 1950 and then he um, died a few years after. So this, this book is written by their daughter. They had um, two children together and Fay Ray had another child um, from a previous marriage. So um, they raised those three children together. Um, and Victoria Riskin is the youngest of the, of the, um, of the kids. And she had, she, I didn't know really much about her before I read this book. And she had an amazing career too. She was a psychiatrist. Um, she became a writer and worked on TV, producing TV and writing for TV. And she's a human rights activist. And she's like an amazing writer. Like she inherited whatever um, was in the gene pool that Robert Riskin had. <laughs> she inherited herself because um, as a memoir, this is like, like just very beautifully told. The, the storytelling technique is really engaging. You kind of get lost in the stories. Um, so she's just a fantastic storyteller. So you're in good hands um, with, with Victoria Riskin. And one thing too is because this is a daughter talking about her parents. You know, it's kind of a, um, a double-edged sword, sword because you have on the one hand, um, it's just very intimate knowledge about the subjects from being, you know, their daughter and having access to, you know, like, for example, a lot of um, Robert Riskin's um, wartime letters, love letters that he wrote to Faye Ray. Um, some of those are included in the book, and that's something that she has access to being a family member. And then she has her own personal story she can share of her memories of her, of her mom and her dad. But then there's also um, bias that comes with being, you know, the daughter. But I felt that even um, she was still willing to criticize her parents in certain decisions that maybe she didn't agree with. And also anything that she shared that um, was very positive about her parents, she backs it up with facts. So I feel like she does a really good job balancing this as a biographical book about two very interesting people from Hollywood history, but also being a personal memoir too about her parents. And one thing too about this, which I really enjoyed, was that this is also a life and times kind of book. You really get the sense of um, the time that they, not only the time that both Faye Ray and Robert Riskin were kind of growing up and, and be, um, coming into their careers, but also a sense of what Hollywood was like at the time. So you, she, um, the author really delves into what's going on in the 20s and the 30s, uh, what's going on in the 40s with World War II, what's going on in the 50s with the, um, the blacklist and things like that. And there's also lots of different, lots of information on different figures. Like there's a lot of information about Frank Capra and his kind of um, 
uh, his his legacy, his relationship with her father, um, their working relationship, and then kind of how um, in his later years how he basically took ownership of everything and really didn't give credit to um, people he had collaborated with, which I thought was super interesting. And you get to know about other people like Dolores Del Rio, who was a good friend of Fay Ray's. Um, you learn a lot about Fay Ray's first husband, John Monk Saunders, who was also a screenwriter and had um, terrible issues and they had a really, really um, tough marriage. So you learn about that aspect of it too. And also Robert Riskin's previous relationships like with um, the writer Edith Fitzgerald, who, whom he lived with um, for, for a long time, unmarried, and that story became illicit and ex-lady, so, um, so they collaborated on projects too. And also like his relationships with Carol Lombard and um, Glenda Farrell and like all, all sorts of people. So you get to, you get to know, oh, also um, Faye Ray's relationship with Clifford Odets. Like there's lots of different, um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be romantic relationships. It could be working relationships or friendships. Like they were friends with um, Joe Swirling, who was also, um, I believe, a screenwriter too. So you get a lot of information about the people who were in their world. Um, and so, and what's interesting too is like, uh, so we're learning about Fay Ray, we're learning about Robert, Robert Riskin, but, but I mean, they don't live in a vacuum. Like there's all these people who are influencing them and who they're collaborating with. So um, I think the author did a really good job of, you know, making sure that you're acquainted with these other figures. So the way the book is structured, there's a little introduction um, to the story and then, um, uh, the very beginning starts with um, uh, Victoria Riskin's like early memories of her father before he passed away. Um, he passed away in 1955 and she was still pretty young so she shares pretty much as many memories as she can um, in the context of the book. Um, and throughout the book there's lots of photos and one thing I absolutely love when books do this, like this is just, you know, black and white, text, I mean, it's black text on white paper, there's no full color images, it's not a coffee table book, it's just a straight memoir, but what I like is that it's not an insert of photos in, in the middle, and then you kind of have to dip back to the photos if you want to kind of get a sense of some visuals and then go back to the story. All the, all the images, and there's a lot of black and white images throughout, are spread, um, spread in throughout the different chapters. Um, where they relate to the text and I absolutely love when books do this and not enough books do so I give total credit to the um, whoever came up with that decision whether it was the author the designers or both or who or the editors um, I just think that's really fun there's a lot lots of um, family photos a lot of studio portraits posters all sorts of things that are relevant um, this cute little um, wedding photo here of them two together. And this is, I mean, as I said, this is the advanced reader's copy, so um, it will change a little bit um, with the finished book, maybe in terms of like maybe better quality since this is just made for review purposes. Um, I did find one error in the book and then I went to Google Books to search for that caption. They had mislabeled Bruce Cabot and then when I looked at it, um, in Google Books, it had been corrected. So one thing about advanced reader's copies, if you do um, read them either for uh, professional reasons or um, if, you have a, um, if you're reviewing stuff for your blog or you win them in a giveaway, is that there's, there's still, it's uncorrected proof. So there's still copy editing and proofreading to be done after the fact. So there might be some errors and it's good if you're going to call anything out. Like, for example, I thought it was great that that Bruce Cabot error was caught later and fixed. So I appreciate that because I'm very picky about, the, about those details. And um, otherwise, I thought this book was just very well done and structured. It basically, um, after those memories that she shares of her father and her mother um, kind of in their later years, she goes into alternating chapters. Um, each chapter starts with a quote, it's either a literary quote, a historical quote, or a quote that um, is pertinent to the chapter ahead, and it alternates between 
Robert Riskin and Fay Ray. Um, and it keeps flip, flip flopping throughout and it goes chronologically. And we learn about their personal lives and their careers, their families, um, and everything that, and the times that they met up and then the, the, that moment where they actually go on their first date. But that's thrown off because Fay Ray is dating Clifford Odets. But then finally, they find their way together during World War II, and they get married, and they have kids, and it's just a wonderful marriage that is unfortunately cut short with um, Robert Riskin's untimely demise, um, suffering a stroke. He um, suffered a couple strokes, and, and um, Victoria Riskin goes into detail about that. So I did really like the alternating chapters. I didn't feel confused at all, um, because the chapters do kind of settle in a little bit. And, but they're not too long, so you do, you don't like, like you're not on a Robert Riskin chapter and then forget about Fay Ray. I mean, both people are, are mentioned in those chapters, even if the chapter isn't about them. And it does go in chronological time. Um, it, I mean, like the beginning of it kind of dips more into the recent past, and then it starts from the beginning and it goes to the end. And the end, the end is really, is just very bittersweet and... Um, I was getting very emotional about the last chapter with, um, when Victoria Riskin was talking about Faye Ray's final days, um, and it's just, I, I thought it was, um, incredibly insightful. This is a, I, I would recommend this more for people who are interested in Hollywood history, because, I mean, you could approach it as about, about a couple who were professionals in a field, um, who had two distinct talents, one an actress, one a writer, and, um, and learning about their lives and learning about their careers and how they came together. And you could read it as like just a straight memoir, but I think there's so much information about Hollywood history that if you weren't interested in Hollywood history, you might get bogged down by those details and become un um, disinterested in the book. But for people like me who love classic movies and want to learn absolutely everything about them, that's a plus for me. So I'm living for all of those details and constantly taking notes and making lists of films I want to see or having aha moments about films that I have seen but I didn't make maybe know that particular aspect about it. Um, so, and also as I said, it it comes from a from somebody who is just very well experienced writer. I mean, as I said, like Victoria Riskin, she was a she she was a psychiatrist, so she kind of gets into the um, the the basically the psychology of of their relationship and and how they approached their other relationships and their careers and the the friendships and things like that. But then also. She just kind of has that, that very, very, um, I don't know how to say it, like basically she's such a talented storyteller, you just get lost uh, in, the, in the book. I remember being kind of halfway through and I was dipping in and out of it and then, then I just said, you know, I, I just got to give myself a couple of hours to sit and read this and I just got lost in it because like it's just, the stories are so engaging and these are all super interesting people and I really wanted to learn more. And um, I didn't really know much about Faye Ray or Robert Riskin, so this was quite an education. So, and really I don't, uh, other than like maybe a t two lines that kind of struck me as maybe off-putting in their tone, and I don't necessarily want to say what those were because they could have been fixed in the final book, I don't know. Um, I just thought Victoria Riskin's voice was very um, kind of comforting, she just, a comforting, informative, smart, and um, just a great storyteller, basically. That's that's my gist here. So if you do get a chance to grab a copy of this, it is on sale in hardcover, um, do, because not only is the cover gorgeous, it's going to look great on your bookshelves, um, it is an amazing book. And from other people who have read it, I've heard them say the same thing, that the writing is really amazing, very engaging, they kind of get lost in it, um, and and I think what I haven't heard from other people is that the, the photos, I just think the idea that the photos are mixed throughout is such a plus for this. 
So I want to thank Pantheon Books for sending me this advanced reader's copy um, for review. So this is the second book in my summer reading challenge, which is happening right now. Um, it's actually too late to sign up. The sign up period is over, but I host this every year, so you're welcome to join in next year. And my goal for this summer is to basically review every book that I um, read for the challenge as a video and on my blog. So let's see if I keep that up. Well, I hope you like this video and thanks for watching. Bye.